Hello folks, Neil here from I Will Always Love Video Games, welcoming you to episode 48 of I Will Always Finds. You guys know that classic Simpsons episode where Springfield is in a major heat wave and they show a hippie on a street corner singing sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy and then some random guy comes up and punches that hippie straight in the face? Yeah, that's me. I hate heat. I hate humidity and summer is not my favorite time of the year. But this is the best time to go out and look for games and that's exactly what I did this past week. And here's what I found. A beautiful morning at the flea market in. Ooh, some games already? Uh, stuff I already have or flat out junk. Damn, got my hopes up. Super Ninja Chinese knockoff. Some more newcomers. As the weather heats up, more people take the chance to pay for a table for a day and unload their stuff all at once instead of having a yard sale. This table's being run by a group of three siblings. Let's see what they've got. There can be two for three. The three DS, those are three. So these are three dollars each, you said, the 3DS games. And this is two for three? Damn, those are some nice prices. Time to pull out the old wallet. A bunch of cheapo PS2 and Wii titles. How much? Uh, those are four. And take a look at them, they're all not scratched up or anything. Okay. Uh, they were. A shame too, because I'd have snatched up that Transformers title. Some really bad-ass posters of very heavy metal art by Oscar Ciccioni, Frank Frazetta, and other artists. $20 a piece is a bit much for me today, though, and I have nowhere to hang them. Went to the endorse section, and this is what I saw. I hate it when vendors are this late to open their tables. The market had already been open nearly two hours. Looks like all I ended up with today were some games from those three kids, but still, $9 total for Castlevania, Duke Nukem, Rayman, and Pac-Man? I'm cool with that. The week's first trip to Second and Charles begins with this very clean copy of Metroid Prime 2 Echoes for the GameCube. $20 is a fairly average price. Godzilla for the NES, $10. Another average price. Here's AD&D Iron and Blood for PS1 for $8, yet another average VGPC price. Something tells me I won't be finding any steals today. The Lemmings 2-pack for PS1 for only $8. Still an average price, but I've been actively looking for this one. I used to love playing Lemmings as a kid on my Mac Performa 5200. Wow, now I'm definitely showing my age. Reboot! Man, oh man, I loved this show as a kid, and Hexadecimal has remained one of my all-time favorite cartoon villains. Cameo, or Cameo, Elements of Power for the Xbox 360, and it's sealed. At four bucks, I really should have bought it. Truth be told, I'm not really into these Funko Pop figures, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't want this blue ghost. Left 2NC with a few surprises, as well as a few games I've been searching for, including Buffy for the original Xbox. The grand total was only $28. Let's see if Goodwill has anything worth buying this week. A $30 PS1 with a power cable and nothing else, and another $30 PS1 with a controller and nothing else. <sighs> okay then, heading home. Saturday morning and the flea market is surprisingly empty. Oh no! Nice or nasty for two to eight adult players? So it's an orgy game. Interesting. Check out this box full of promo CD singles. These are usually sent to radio stations and music stores to play, and they're not available for retail sale. The box says $2. Does that mean $2 a piece? The whole box is two bucks? Yeah. <laughs> no way. Really? Two bucks? Hell yeah, I'll grab this box. I can pass these CDs on as trade bait. This young lady is another newcomer to the flea market. Okay. They're four? So four bucks? Okay. Four dollars for a complete copy of Skyrim Legendary Edition? That's a no-brainer. Upon re-watching this, I wish I had grabbed Tomb Raider Underworld for two dollars as well. Eh, what are you gonna do? My favorite couple is back with some new stuff, including a boxed Sears telegame system. 
It's 100% complete and it'd be great to have, but they're asking $70 and won't budge on the price. Regardless, it's still cool to see something obscure like this pop up at the market. The Private Eyes. This is one of my wife's favorite movies, and I maintain that the Wookalar is real. Blast from the Past Portable CD Players. Today's youth will never know the struggle of cramming one of these in their pocket when they went out for a walk or a bike ride, and God help you if you moved your leg too fast or ran. After passing up a dirty old Xbox, I grabbed one last item and split, a huge hardcover Batman book that retails for 50 bucks. How much did I pay? Six. Along with Skyrim and this nice box of promo CDs, I only spent a measly $12 today. Can the week end on an even higher note than this? Well, let's find out. With Second and Charles trip number two. Up near the trade-in counter, they have a massive bin full of anime DVDs. I was huge into anime as a teenager, but aside from a select few shows and movies, I kinda got out of that whole scene. Some pretty fair prices on loose NES cards today, but then we have crap like this, and this. A few dollars difference between games is one thing, but to drastically go from $15 to $26 for the same title? When will they learn? I really want this copy of Capcom vs SNK2, but I don't want to use up all my credit on just one game. This is more within my budget today, The Incredible Hulk for PS2. A fairly decent smash em up, although it's better on 7th gen hardware. Legaia 2 Duel Saga. I've never heard of this. For a little over 6 bucks, I'll give it a shot. Looks interesting. <gasps> Eco! Do I even need to say anything about this? It's Eco! Definite purchase. This is it. I'm set. $40.75 was the grand total for this final haul of the week, but with my store credit, I ended up paying nothing. And of course, we all know which game steals the spotlight. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Barney on the Genesis. Woo! Find of the week. No, it wasn't. This was. Um, yeah. <laughs> Barney, Barney's a game, if you can call it that, but Eco, Eco is a masterpiece. And you know what? I would not have found this if I didn't go out and look, and that's what I keep telling you guys with every episode. You have to hit up your own thrift shops, you have to go to your own pawn shops, and your own Goodwills, and flea markets, and swap meets, and take a good, long look around, because you never know what you'll find, and you won't know unless you look. Until next time, my name is Neil. And I will always love you. I actually have a really funny story about Barney, somewhat tied to Barney. Um, when I was a kid, I used to prank call Bell Atlantic. Um, I lived down the road from a little Amish shop, and they were closed on Sundays because Amish shop, and they had a, um, a payphone out front, and uh, I used to call Bell Atlantic pretty much every Sunday and prank call them, and every week I would call and I would just do different voices, like, you know, I'd call as Mr. Burns, Hello, I'm looking for Waylon Smithers. Um, stuff like that. But there was one particular Sunday, um, I don't know, I must have been like 10, 11, maybe 12, I don't know, uh, and around that age, and I called Bell Atlantic and I pretended to be a little boy, about four or five years old, getting on the phone, trying to call the Barney hotline. And um, <laughs> so I got on and uh, you know, I started talking like, hi, I, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to talk to Barney. And the guy on the other end, I don't know if they traced the call or whatever, uh, he knew exactly what I was doing, and he's like, oh sure little boy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you right through, and he puts on some hold music. This guy comes back on as Barney. He starts doing the Barney voice, and he's like, hello there little boy, how are you? And I'm just playing along, I'm like, hey, it's Barney. I said the most vile shit to this Bell Atlantic employee, and uh, it was great because he kept playing along and it culminated with me in a little kid voice 
um, saying something along the lines of like, um, I heard that you were uh, on the set and you and you fucked Baby Bop in the ass or something like that. This guy, this Bell Atlantic employee, in the Barney voice, comes back. <laughs> he comes back to me, and he's like, "Well, I only did that after I fucked your mother." I I just uh, if if you're out there, Mr. Bell Atlantic employee, who whose day I made that day, twenty odd years ago, whatever. If you actually watch this, I just want to say, you helped make my childhood because that was by far. The best prank call ever of, of all time of my life. And uh, it's all thanks to this, uh, this little purple dinosaur here. <sighs>